Good morning everybody and once again welcome to the video. In this video I'm going to be sharing a solution that companies and organization can use out of the box for automating or orchestrating EMR jobs. Yes that's correct. So in this video I'll essentially show you the entire code with infrastructure that we can deploy with one simple command that is npx as well as deploy and we are going to use step function to orchestrate our spark jobs using a popular pattern called async callback pattern. What is async callback pattern? In this pattern what happens is as soon as you submit a job, the job goes into a queue, SQSQ. From there the Lambda will take the, take the job and will fire up an EMR job. Okay, And it will also pass the token to the EMR job. Now the step function execution is paused. The EMR job is going to work or run asynchronously in the background. And whenever it's done, it's completed, maybe after one day, two day, a month, it's going to reply back asynchronously to the token to the step function and the step function execution now resumes. Now you can take actions such as you can send email alerts, you can update the metadata in DynamoDB or etc etc. So let me show you the solution in this video. So let's deploy the entire stack. So come to the project directory or the GitHub repository and clone the project. What you will see is I have essentially done, this is again a full-fledged production ready code, right? Uh, the, this, this stack will essentially uh, deploy an SQSQ, an S3 bucket, a role, a policy. Uh, this will also deploy uh, three Lambda functions, success handler, failure handler, and a, and a Lambda function to fire EMR serverless job. And this Lambda will also basically deploy a step function. So let's deploy the entire stack. It should be pretty straightforward. Uh, make sure to change your environment variable in the .env, in the .env file. Now let's deploy this. So we're going to say npx sls deploy region us east 1. Now we are, we are essentially deploying the entire stack and this can take up to 5 to 10 minutes. So hence I am going to uh, pause the video and resume the video once the stack is deployed. the stack is finally deployed now let's basically take a look at the further steps okay so over here I'm gonna create a folder called scripts okay and in your project directory you will be essentially given um, a sample EMR uh, job that we are gonna orchestrate right again this is a template that you can use for all the EMR jobs moving forward so I'm gonna drag this template over here we will go over the code base shortly so don't worry about that so here you can see I have a python file called mytest.py we'll go over the code don't worry now what we need to do is basically uh, I'm really not sure if EMR serverless has Boto3 pre-installed but I'm gonna basically create a package and deploy the Boto3 and Boto core package on S3 so I can use that on my EMR job so let me show you that process now, okay? Um, ideally, uh, again, I'll also leave the links here in the description. So if you wanna follow along, uh, you can follow along uh, with this article over here. So again, this article shows you how to use external packages, Python packages in EMR serverless, right? So all I'm gonna do is I've already performed all these steps and simply what I'm doing is I'm gonna copy um, that GZ file into my S3. So I will be executing the last command. Again, these links are given in the description. So please don't worry about those part. So uh, let me execute this first of all quickly. And uh, again, what this is gonna do is, uh, if I now refresh, I should see a folder called Python package. And here you can see. So this one, basically, it has my Boto3 and Boto Core, um, you know, libraries inside. So I can use in my EMR job. So now what, what we need to do is, all we need to do is fire the, uh, the step function. And I'll show you the orchestration part in a second. Uh, before that, let me make sure I uh, collapse this over here. All right. So now heading back to the step function again this is the step function right so we're gonna execute that so i'm gonna click on start execution and uh, basically i have made this into a really easy template so again if you observe uh, the json over here it takes the application id the application id is usually um, you know your um, emr serverless application id so that's that it takes the script path so where your python file is stored right so basically that script path would be over here. That's the path that we're talking about, right? So that is the path that we have over here, right? 
Over here we have the spark conf and if you observe this line carefully, I'm gonna try to zoom in here. So this is uh, where we are basically providing the Boto3 and Boto Core package, right? So that we can use in our EMR serverless job, right? Uh, execution uh, time, then we have a job name, and then this is the on that was generated through your serverless framework. So that's the payload that I'm about to use, okay? So I am coming back to my step function and I will execute that in a second, okay? So um, hopefully that makes sense. So now I'm gonna execute that. So if you observe my step function is um, in the pending state. So if I observe here and if I refresh, I should see a job in a pending state. Now when this job is complete, this job will basically respond back asynchronously to the step function and the step function will resume the execution and either it will, if it is a success, it will go to the success handler. If it's a fail, it can go to the fail handler. So the step function at this point has paused the execution. So let me resume back once the job is complete, okay? This is still in the pending state. And here you can see that's the task token that it was passed. So I just wanted to show you the EMR job. Again, don't worry, I'll, I'll delete my credentials after this video probably. So this is, the, this is the EMR job that we basically gave, right? So it basically checks if we provided any arguments and over here, if you observe, again, I'm gonna delete them, so don't worry about that, right? And if, so here you can add your business logic of your Spark application, right? So your regular Spark code can go here right and i'll remove these one right so now what happens is if your spark job was successful it will respond back to the step function to that task token so here you can see we grab the task token on line 34 and then we respond back saying that send success and if it failed you can of course send a failed one as well right so that hopefully that makes sense right so all the job does is basically you will write your business logic or application code over here and this job yeah, after executing at the end, it's gonna respond back to the task token, okay? So at this point, I'm simply waiting for the job to complete. I'm refreshing, it is in the running state. And observe the step function, right? The execution, look at that, look at that. The job just completed. And what happened is basically the step function is now in the succeeded state, right? It's absolutely flawless how this entire architecture works, right? It's, it's just flawless. And again, this is a production ready code, all the infrastructure code, everything is there on my GitHub section, which you can download readily and start using in your company or organization. Thank you very, very much for, for watching. You can also schedule the step function on a, on a next. So basically if you have a job that you wanna schedule at night, you could do that using step function. Now in the success handler, you can either store the metadata or send alerts to an SNS topic saying that the job succeeded, the job failed, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Remember automation is the key for any project. So the more you automate, the better it is, right? So thank you so much for watching the video. And again, yeah, this is an amazing project that I strongly encourage you guys to try this out. And if you have any more question, list your question. With that being said, keep smiling, keep programming. I'll also write a beautiful article. Actually, I'll show you uh, quickly before I head off, uh, before I turn the video off. I do, I, I am actually writing an article over here. So hopefully those steps will be there there as well. So again, I, I am in a process. This, it's just that it takes time. You know, all these stuff, it takes time because you got to write stuff. You got to document everything well. So it just takes time. So thank you so much for watching. Please download the code and try that out without. Um, oh yeah, but yeah. So please download that. And also one more thing I want to tell you before we head off. Just yesterday, as of 2-19-2023, uh, AWS has just announced, um, you know, a lot of plugins for EMR serverless. So basically you don't need an SQS on a Lambda. You can use the step function, native functionality to fire up the EMR job and uh, basically implement async callback pattern. Again, I'm just going to show you, I don't want to go too, too much into detail. Again, this is just announced a day before. So, uh, really, really, really quick. Okay. I've already tried it in my, uh, you know, my, in my free time. So if you observe, if I go to edit state machine, so quickly observe here. This is a native functionality that you can use right now. They have just announced it a day before yesterday, as I said, right? So in case if you want to use that, you can also use that. Or in case if you want a finer control, you, uh, you can use my solution. SQS Lambda asynchronously passes a task token. 
See, behind the scenes, AWS is also doing the same thing, right? You can either use the native functionality or you can implement your own. The reason I showed my solution is I was doing that from last week and AWS just announced this feature. So, well, that's all for this video and hope you have enjoyed. If you have any more questions, list your question and I will see you in the next video.